Hey guys, what's up? My name is Stephen Mayu, and this is my video series on full stack JavaScript, where I'm going to show you how to build a RESTful API. Okay, in the last videos, I showed you how to get set up and um, get up and running with the boilerplate code uh, generated by Express Generator. And in the last video, I showed you specifically how views work in, uh, in Express apps and, and how the view gets rendered by you know, different routes. Um, so right now, we have this... Um, we have this uh, this uh, you know root route you could call it, and it's rendering the index view, and we're passing it some data right here. Um, but it doesn't look like much right now. It's just this uh, you know simple web page right here with uh, my name and welcome to Stevens Express. So let's uh, just you know wrap this up and let's put some instructions so so people you know actually know what it is. And you know before I do that. Um, the boilerplate it actually you know uh, brings up uh, two uh, it generates two routes for us uh, users and index and we don't need the users route so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that and and delete this one as well and uh, okay I'm going to go ahead and save that remember anytime you save a JavaScript file you're gonna to have to restart the server so um, hopefully I don't forget to restart it uh, whenever we view the changes okay so we've got uh, we've got a route here I want to uh, render the index and you know I won't have to pass any data to it so I'm just gonna get rid of that data object and uh, okay there we go and now um, you know, I, I don't have to include any doc types or HTML tags because uh, I'm just including it right here um, in the layout view. Okay, so uh, I think it's better just to start from scratch, and uh, let's uh, let's just do it. So it extends layout. So um, basically, I'm wrapping it all around uh, here. Okay, extending the layout view, extends layout, and then we're gonna write block content. So that's where that's where this comes in right here, and uh, in Jade everything is done you know with indentation, so no no brackets like you have in regular HTML. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to just say h1, okay, uh, Stevens. Um, I keep doing that. Micro Stevens RESTful API. Let's do a h2 tag and you can see like jade it's just really concise i mean you just write the element and then you know you know yeah, that's it it's really really easy to use uh stevens restful api let's say um let's see time uh micro service okay and then uh let's uh let's say p and let's give it a class of red so classes, you know, in CSS are signified by dots, and then IDs are signified by uh, hashes. So I, I want to give this a little bit of styling. Let me go to my uh, style sheet right here, and uh, let's just say, okay, if it's a class of red, uh, color is red. Okay. And let's see, um, we'll say example usage. Okay, and then uh, we need to let's see. I think we can do this code. That's an element in HTML5. So let's say a code, and we'll say h. Uh, we'll say localhost for right now. Localhost three thousand, and then uh, we can pass in a natural like language date. So let's say August fourteenth, two thousand sixteen. Or we can pass in uh, something else like a like a Unix timestamp. So localhost 3000, and then uh, I don't know a bunch of numbers here. Uh, no idea if that'll work. It's like way into the future, I think. Okay, that that should be okay. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's save all of our files. I did a save all. Need to come here and restart the server so I'm going to control C and then npm start okay I'm going to go over to the browser refresh the page okay cool so uh, looks like we've got um, 
looks like we got our, um, you know, a little bit of a code right here. So we got the header, time microsurface, uh, example usage. So localhost. Okay, uh, I need a I need a break right there. I thought that would give me a break. Let's try that. And if you're if you're just saving Jade files, there's no need to restart the server. Okay, that's much better. And then um, and, and then yeah, let's just uh, uh, tell the user what what to expect um, for like the output. So I'm going to say red um, expected output um, is JSON, and then we'll just do some code. Uh, okay, we'll say like Unix. This is JSON, so I'm just writing some simple JSON right here. So JSON, and I don't know what the JSON value would be. And then I'll say natural, and then this would be the natural date. All right. No idea what the um, what the timestamp for for August fourteenth would be. I'm just guessing right now. Let me just go ahead and save that. Go back to the browser. Okay, pretty cool. So uh, this is just some basic, you know, instructions. You know, uh, when people go to our page, and uh, okay, this is the endpoint right here. This is how you make a request to my API. So you got to uh, add in a parameter, and uh, it could be a natural language date or a Unix timestamp, and then your expected output is going to be JSON data, and so it would probably look something like that. Cool. So uh, we got our index view. And it's going to render uh, when we go here. It's going to render the index view, and which is what we just built out with um, uh, with some you know Jade, which is just a shorter version of HTML. Okay, so now let's uh, let's actually um, you know build the route for uh, you know when when people when people pass in a date parameter or a number parameter. Uh, let's build that out. So in order to do that. We're going to create a new route, router.get, okay, and I'm going to write this, colon time, okay. So anytime a route has a colon and it's followed by like this variable, uh, that's a parameter, a URL parameter. And uh, you can do multiple parameters, um, but if you just have a single one, you can do it just like this with a colon. And uh, anything after um, the forward slash, uh, we can capture in, in the request. So let's do our callback function, request, response. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to display. All right. I'm not going to render anything, but I'm just going to display uh, the um, display like the parameter. And we could do that by we can access you know whatever the user puts in this way request dot params dot time so i'm going to save all that let me restart the server oops okay go back to the page i'm going to refresh okay that's expected and then let me just type in uh something like uh yeah december 25th 1978 whatever 2017 okay so I got this uh, text right here and it's coming from it's coming from this request dot params dot time and this is um, the string that comes after the forward slash and uh, it'll work with anything uh, I can I can go ahead and I can Say like hello world. Okay, and, and there it is too. And you know, if I really want to, I, I can you know certainly you know uh, I can render this to a page as well. Okay, so how about um, how about we try this? We're gonna say res render index, and uh, um, I don't know. We'll say we'll give it an object, and we'll say um, so request. We'll say param. And we'll just say request.params.time. Okay. And we'll go back to our index view. And 
let's see, uh, let's try it again. We'll say h1 equals, um, what is it? Time, yeah, let me just double check that, yep. Oh, we called it param, all right, let's call it time. There we go, all right, I'm gonna save all of those, restart the server, why do I keep doing that? And all right. Okay, so you can see, uh, you know, I, I can take a parameter and uh, I can, uh, you know, also render it into a view. Um, you know, here it is, right there. Uh, and if I go back to the, you know, home page, all right, um, for for the home page or the root route, I'm not passing in any, you know, data. So um, you know, that's not like going to show up. But uh, over here. I am passing it some data, and then I'm just dropping it in right here. So time that comes from this line right here, the the time um, the time like key from our you know data object. Um, and here's another cool thing. So I can render it to a view, or I can also render it to JSON. So uh, let's let's see what that would look like. We could say you know something like var data. Okay, and you know, we'll just make it an object literal. So time equals request dot params dot time. Okay, and then I can say response dot JSON and just put in the data variable like that. If I save it, go back to the browser. Okay, refresh. Okay, and let's just put in, yeah, August 12th, um, two, 2009. Okay, anything. All right, cool. So now we got JSON, and uh, we're not getting any, you know, HTML or CSS or nothing like that. We're getting uh, JSON uh, uh, values. So in Express, uh, you can respond with you know a lot of different things. You can say response.render to render one of the uh, views that you've created. You can say uh, response.send, and that just sends like plain text to the browser. Or you can write response.json, uh, give it uh, an object, and then what you get in your browser or what you get uh, is just some JSON data. And this is how uh, APIs work. So if you watched my you know, video about the random quote machine uh, and we, we hit the Forismatic quote generator you know, API, uh, something similar is happening. We made a request to a specific URL. It uh, generated, uh, randomly selected a, a, a quote, and then it's you know, responded to us with some JSON just like this. So that's how APIs work. Um, the, the mystery, the magic has been uncovered. It's really, you know, not all that complicated. You make a request and instead of responding with files, you respond with JSON. So in the next video, I'm going to show you uh, how we can, um, how we can determine if the user uh, parameter was a Unix timestamp or a natural language state, and then how we can convert both. So I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.